Hello, and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez, and today I want to talk about the, the metamorphic rocks in the Sierra Nevada, and particularly what they tell us about the, the, the history of not just California, but of all of Western North America. And what we'll see is that Western North America, during the, the middle parts of the Paleozoic and on through, really through the Cenozoic, has been um, growing through a process called accretion. And accretion is you're adding fragments of either ocean lithosphere or maybe island arcs or, or micro plates, micro tectonic plates. You're attaching them or docking them to uh, the coastline of California. You can see this all the way, basically from Mexico, all the way up into Alaska. Uh, and so uh, there's a couple of videos I'm going to have you watch, or tutorials I'll have you watch um, online and answer, answer some questions about um, these exotic terrains. They're called um, uh, exotic blocks, exotic terrains, uh, tectonostratigraphic blocks or terrains. There's various names, but one key thing is that these terrains um, have a sequence of rocks that indicate they formed together as a packet, but they formed in a different tectonic setting when they're, than where they are today. Um, so let's look at some of these metamorphic rocks in the PowerPoint here. So the first group of rocks are, are the, the cratonic margin rocks, and those are the, the passive margin sediments. The trailing continental margin sediments, they include the shoe fly complex and, and the metamorphic roof pendants of the High Sierra. But in reality, if you can look through the metamorphic rocks found in the Sierra Nevada, you find that those rocks are essentially the, the Johnny Quartzite, the Noonday Dolomite, the Ibex Formation, the, the, the Wood Canyon Formation, Sterling Quartzite, all those formations that we talked about in Death Valley, right? We also find them here except they're altered, they've been metamorphosed, uh, but they can be correlated to those rocks along the passive margin. So that's one group. And so uh, we call these cratonic because they formed right here in North America. They're, they're not necessarily exotic. Although there's, some although there's a volcanic sequence that's kind of thrown in the mix that is exotic. But for the main part, these sedimentary rocks um, are, are um, in fact, we call those autochthonous or indigenous to California or the Western, Western United States. Now, the second group of metamorphic rocks are, are going to be exotic. And, and primarily, they formed in an oceanic setting, either a Japan-type margin uh, an ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent margin that was then thrust upon North America. So they include metavolcanic rocks and metasedimentary rocks uh, uh, that were accreted along these, um, along these margins. So in the Sierra Nevada, we, we have the Northern Sierra terrain. And because the Klamath Mountains are very similar geologically to the Sierra Nevada, there's this group there called the Eastern Klamath Terrain, which also was created at the same time, or really simultaneously, maybe part of the same block as the Northern Sierra terrain. And in fact, both of these terrains share a, a similar sequence of, of fossils called the McLeod fauna. They're really distinct, distinctive. They're a series of, of fusilinids. Fusilinids are these, um, they're basically single-celled amoeba-like uh, uh, protozoans that live in the ocean. They make a shell out of calcium carbonate. So they're, they're, they're the ones that make limestone. So you find these in limestone. And then there's also some, some corals that are distinctive and some brachiopods that are different than other fossils found in North America or in other places in the Pacific. These are kind of distinct to, to kind of Northern California uh, uh, Oregon, Washington, Alaska. They're typical of those regions there. So we'll have those terrains being docked and then there's also going to be the Sonoma volcanic arcs that are going to come a little bit later along with this this complex called the Calaveras complex which occurs in the Sierra Nevada foothills and and those also have the McLeod fauna affinity. So you'll read about in chapter 9 when you read about the Klamath Mountains that, that this is a distinctive sequence uh, uh, for, for this fossil group in North America. Now, the next group are, are a series of metavolcanic and metasedimentary rocks, very similar to the previous one, but these um, are Paleozoic and Mesozoic. So the first group is only Paleozoic up here. But now here we're getting into the Mesozoic, but these also have a variety of, 
of, of ophiolite complexes. Remember, we talked about ophiolites, which include the serpentinite, and which, are, which represents a mantle, and the gabbros, and then the, these sheeted dike complexes, and the pillow lavas, right? So they all represent um, a, a segment of the ocean lithosphere, right? And that's been attached to Northern California uh, in a couple of places. In fact, it's called the Smartville Block. Um, I'm going to have you read another chapter in Assembling California, and McPhee talks about this Smartville Block in, in quite, quite a bit of detail. And so there's a Smartville Block, which represents oceanic lithosphere, perhaps in a basin between these Nevadan island arcs that were forming offshore. Um, and, um, and that's also going to form this Foothills Metamorphic Belt. Another interesting thing about this, this group of rocks, which occurs at the far western point. In fact, um, in the Klamath Mountains, we call this the western Klamath Mountain terrain, just to differentiate it from the eastern Klamath Mountain. But in the western Klamath Mountains and the foothills terrain of the Sierra Nevada, the fossils are different. They're called Tethian. So we see the same types of fossils, corals and fusilinids, like we saw in the, in the eastern Klamath and the northern Sierra terrain, except that these Corals and fusilinids are different. They're, they're a different species, they're a different type, and they're, they have a greater affinity to fossils found in Japan, China, Southeast Asia. So during this time, uh, um, uh, well, actually a little bit later, there's going to be a series of, 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 um, of rock formations that form in an equatorial seaway called the Tethy Seaway. But anyhow, this Tethian fauna is more related to to a region in um, in the Pacific rather than in the, I guess you call it the Western Pacific over by Japan and China, in the ocean there, instead of the, the Northern Pacific we see for the McLeod fauna. So one interesting thing that your that Hardin points out in your in your textbook California Geology is that that even though some of the there's overlap in ages with the Tethian fauna and the McLeod fauna. The, the terrains are are exotic. They're just forming in different places, right? The, because the fossils for this are distinctly different from the fossils from this terrain, which means they must have formed in different regions. And then they were brought here by plate tectonics. So the metavolcanic rocks of Mesozoic Age. So these include the the pyroclastic, the lavas, material that formed during the um, uh, the formation of the Sierra Nevada Baffling. So these would be like the minarets in the Ritter Range. So those are about 100 million years old, and they're related to the, the arc volcanism over the Sierra Nevada Baffling. And those, some of those have been metamorphosed um, um, by intrusions of magmas later on. Now, so for the roof pendants, remember, roof pendants form um, as a magma is rising, heat and pressure is going gonna, is gonna to burn the adjacent surrounding rock, making this roof pendant right here. Eventually, erosion will expose us, and we'll see these older metamorphic rocks. So the strata here, you see, represents that trailing continental margin sediment. So here's, you can see there's several roof pendants. Uh, I have a picture of one down here in, in the, uh, basically in the southern Sierra Nevada, which Cretaceous plutons have intruded into it. And then I look at another one here called the Mount Morrison roof pendant. So I'll show you some pictures of those. So this is actually the one down in, um, in the Mojave, well, in the southern Sierra, looking from the Mojave back kind of toward the north. You can see the Joshua trees here. But these are Cretaceous granitic rocks related to the Sierra Nevada. And these are metavolcanic rocks around 100 million years old that have been been altered by the intrusion of the magma. So that is a roof pendant right in there. And then, so this is the contact metamorphic zone. And then in the, um, this is Convict Lake, this, the Mount Morrison roof pendant over by Mammoth Mountain. You can see there is there is granite exposed down below here. And then the granite here, the heat of the granite has altered the limestone to marble. And you can see there's some, some folding in the rocks here. Here's a big fold right in here as well. So all these are metamorphic rocks, limestones, uh, quartzites now, um, all been altered by the intrusion of these of the Sierra Baffleth here. So those are the roof pendants, again, representing the cratonic rocks that are autochthonous. In other words, they're forming here in North America. Now, um, so what I want to get into in the next uh, uh, video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relate again the Klamath Mountains and the Sierra Nevada provinces, because again, they both share similar histories. They have the same uh, exotic terrains that have been docking and being attached to Western North America. And both areas have been intruded by Mesozoic plutons. In the Sierra Nevada, we have the Big Baffleth, 
but also similar plutonic rocks have intruded the Klamath Mountains, same age, so they're both related in terms of tectonic style and setting. Now, all you got to do is look, um, uh, look at a map of Northern California. Here's a geologic map in the same formations. Like out here, this would be uh, the Northern Sierra terrain, and the Shoe Fly Complex would match to this Eastern Klamath Mountains terrain over here. And then this Calaveras complex, which is mostly in blue over here, matches to some of the middle terrains and eastern Klamath terrains over here in the Klamath Mountains. Then our, our foothills terrain here, mostly in green, matches to some of the rocks over here uh, in, the, in the western uh, Klamath Mountain terrain. So, so really they're part of the same sequence. Somehow they're separated by some either some fault or some displacement that occurred here um, uh, in the Cenozoic time, perhaps related to the San Andreas Fault movement. Well, let's stop here and then we'll continue on. Thank you.